In honor of Mexico's Independence Day on September 16th, here are the top 10 facts you didn't know about Mexico Part 2. If you haven't watched Part 1, click the eye on the top of the video or click the link in the description to check it out. Number 10. The Pastry War War can be brutal with millions dying from action, starvation, and famine, all because of disagreements and broken promises. But one particular war somehow started ridiculously and turned into a full-fledged conflict all because of a bakery fight. Yeah, that's how the world works nowadays, folks. In 1838, Monsieur Remotel, a French pastry chef, sued the country of Mexico for 600,000 pesos after Mexican officers looted his bakery shop. When the Mexican government refused to pay him, Remotel returned back to France and complained to French King Louis-Philippe about the incident, which the king got his back, demanding the Mexicans to pay up the money. This was soon ignored by the president of Mexico, Anastasio Bustamante, and a state of war was declared by France. The war progress for three months ended with a peace treaty signed between the two countries as Mexico agreed to pay 600,000 pesos to the French pastry chef. Alright, tip number one. If you plan to sue the country, you must be crazy or something. And tip number two. If you already sued the country for such a minor incident, then you're definitely cray cray dude. Number nine. Names of Mexico In my previous video about Mexico, I mentioned Mexico's official name is United Mexican States, or in Spanish as Estados Unidos Mexicanos. But you wonder, where did Mexico get its name from? Well, dear viewer, here's why. Mexico's name dates back during the Aztec times. Mexico's name came from the Aztec capital, Mexico Tonachitlan, what is now known today as Mexico City. It is widely accepted that Mexico is named after their capital, but there are several theories about the origins of the name. One popular theory suggests that the word Meki is thought to be the name of a war god of the Aztecs, Mequitli. Fun fact for you all, the name of this Aztec god came from the word Metzitli, which means moon and navel. Also, what's even cooler, if you combine these two words, it literally changed the meaning to child of the moon. Number 8. Inventions and Food Mexico impacted our lives in the form of their incredible inventions, while introduced us to a vast selection of their famous foods, most notably tacos, nachos, and taquila. But there are more products and delicious foods the country has ever created, such as balloons, popcorn, bird control pill, chewing gum, rubber ball, chocolate, Caesar salad, election ink, and many more. In all honesty, I want to take the Mexicans for making chimichangas a thing because without it, there will be no Deadpool. Yes, I know chimichanga existed before Deadpool's creation in the comics, but given the popularity of the character today with his acclaimed R-rated movies and being played by the sexiest man alive, Ryan Reynolds, it's weird if Deadpool suddenly gave up on eating his favorite food and claimed that chocolate is now his go-to food that will be pointless of his character. Just dumb, pointless shit. Number 7. It was once the 5th biggest nation on Earth. Mexico is ranked number 14th in the biggest nation in our planet, but back in the 19th century, the country is way bigger and different than what it looks like today. When Mexico gained its independence from Spain in 1821, the soon-to-be U.S. states of Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, and California were once an extension of northern Mexico, whilst entire half of Central America including Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Belize, Costa Rica, and Nicaragua were all part of Mexico. In comparison, if modern Mexico eaten the entirety of the European Union, it will be ranked number 5th of the biggest country on earth. But of course, like nations achieved their independence from colonial empires, this didn't last long as revolution and war with the US led to Mexico's huge territories to successfully secede out from the Spanish-speaking nation, the likes of Texas and Central America, or annexed by other countries after a devastating war, like what happened when the United States crushed Mexico in the Mexican-American War of 1846-1848, to which lost its West Coast territories to the US. Number 6. Having the shortest presidency in the history of the world Pedro Lascurain Paredes is famous in Mexico for having the shortest presidential term not only in the history of the country, but also the world. 
how did this happen in the first place? Well, during the Mexican Revolution, Mexican General Victoriano Huerta overthrew the president at the time, Francisco Maderno, in which Paredes, who was the foreign secretary, convinced Maderno to resign as the factor of his presidential downfall. Under the Mexican Constitution of 1857, the role of the president necessarily goes either to the vice president, the attorney general, the foreign secretary, and the interior secretary. In order the coup d'etat to appear authentic, Huerta sacked Vice President Jose Suarez and Attorney General Adolfo Vales Baja and put Pedro Paredes from Foreign Secretary to 34th President of Mexico. In return, President Paredes positioned Victoriano Huerta as the new Interior Secretary, only to resign as President for about 1 hour and 15 minutes giving the leadership to Huerta. So yeah, that kind of short this guy became President. What a waste of time. He could have many opportunities like giving houses to people or fix the stability of the country through reforms or something. But what only this guy do? Nothing. Sorry for the rant. Let's move on. Number 5. Religion As you might guess, Mexico is predominantly Catholic. Around 83% of the population is devoted to the religion and plays second for the largest Catholic communities after Brazil. But however, 1 in 10 adults were raised Catholic but no longer identify with Catholicism, while only about 3 in 10 Catholics in Mexico say the church should allow priests to marry and women to become priests. I like to clarify that I'm not disrespecting the religion because I'm also Catholic myself, but seeing the change of our social norms goes to show that people with their religion are subject to quality and elevation what they want with their religion that they believe in. Number 4. Language You already know and heard the official language of Mexico is Spanish. And for those people who say it's Mexican, then boy go back to school, what's wrong with you? Anyhow, you might not know, except Mexicans, you guys already know this, is that there are multiple languages spoken in the country, all of them are indigenous. Yes, Spanish is not the only language spoken in the country, over 68 have been recognized by the government as co-official languages. The biggest of these languages is Nahuatl, with over 1.3 million speakers. The language originated to the Nahuas, a native tribe living in northwestern Mexico. Behind Natwal is Zucateco Maya or Yucatec Maya in English with over 792,000 speakers. It's only spoken in the Zucatec Peninsula of southeastern Mexico, while Mixtec, spoken only in the Mexican states of Ucaca, Puebla, and Guerrero, has over 480,216 speakers and many more of these native languages to be mentioned that I cannot talk about them in this video cause it's going to be long as shit. Probably I'll make a separate video about these languages if I have the time. Uh, just tell me guys in the comments and Mexicans also uh, if you want to see that video or just tell me. Uh, it's okay to ask. Uh, I'm open to respond to anyone. So yeah, just, just tell me guys. Just tell me. Number 3. The Flag Mexico's flag is very unique to anyone who sees it. The flag is tricolor complete with green on the left, white on the middle, red on the right, and on the center is an emblem symbol of an eagle standing on a peach tree eating a snake. Basically, it's a copy and paste Italian flag with a badass eagle eating snake placed on the center. Sorry, JK. But you might not know, again, is that the flag has a deeper meaning. The green represents the Mexican independence movement from the Spanish, the white stands for the Catholic faith, while the red represents the people who fought their blood and soul for Mexico's independence from Spain. And the eagle symbol doesn't stand for anything, but it has an Aztec backstory. According to legend that the Aztec gods told the Aztecs to build a city was to be identified when they saw an eagle peach on a prickly pear tree devouring a serpent. They saw this eagle on a marshy lake that is now the main plaza in Mexico City. Number 2. Cinco de Mayo Guys, please, if you're only thinking Cinco de Mayo as Mexico's Independence Day, it's not. I want to make it clear, Cinco de Mayo is not Mexico's Independence Day, alright? Okay, so what is Cinco de Mayo anyways? Uh, Cinco de Mayo is an annual tradition celebrated every May 5th to commemorate Mexico's victory over the French troops at the Battle of Puebla 
on May 5, 1862, during the Second French Invasion of Mexico, where they ceremoniously celebrate through battle reenactments and military parades. While many outsiders think this celebration is a huge deal in the country, but in fact, it's not. Well, yeah, Mexicans do celebrate this holiday, mostly in Puebla, Mexico, but is usually big amongst American and Mexican communities in the United States. And this is where the whole confusion between Cinco de Mayo and Mexico's Independence Day, in which they believe that these two holidays are one and the same. Like I said, these holidays are not the same. Mexico's Independence Day, also known as the Cry of Dolores, is celebrated on September 16th, as the day marked their War of Independence from Spain on the morning of September 16th, 1810. And at number one, Mexico City is sinking. I know, I know. You're saying yourself that this is ridiculous. How come Mexico City is sinking? It's not on the east or west coast of the country. It's surrounded by towns, cities, and streams. All right, come down. Just get a cup of coffee and listen to me for God's sake. Yes, this is true. Mexico City is sinking. Currently at 2,240 meters above sea level and is one of the highest capital cities on earth, but over the past 60 years, it's been dropping down around 10 meters above sea level. This is due to residents getting supplies of water beneath the city, which inducing it to descending down. Which if you went to Mexico City, you will notice a lot of cracked statues, roads, street walks, and stairs. Well, that's all because the city is sinking. But don't worry, it will not entirely sink at the bottom of the earth. It's just, well look different by the time it gets to the ground point or is it sorry for that even my laugh is fake by the obvious you know analogy of it so yeah Thank you for watching this video and if you like it, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos from me. C comment below uh, what uh, videos do you want to see next. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, that's at MrJaman19 and the rest of my social media sites. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.